Hi, Ramnex is here. Welcome to my series of videos on Oblivia's Daedric quests. The last video was on Shea Goroth. Today, we're visiting Azura's shrine here in Cyrodiil and completing a task for the Queen of Dawn and Dusk. The quest is just called Azura, and you only need to be second level to start it. It is a straightforward quest, but ends with a difficult fight in a poorly lit silver mine. What? Azura is unusual among the Daedra Lords as she is not overtly evil or nasty or selfish or mad. She rules over the magical in-between realm of twilight, both dawn and dusk. However, she is also called the Daedric Lord of Vanity and Egotism by her critics. She demands the love of her followers and insists that they love each other too. But it is rumored she does not take kindly to those that cross her in the Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. She enlists you to hunt down and kill a healer who has been saying very, very rude things about her. She could be described as loving so long as you do as she wishes, but her displeasure will be felt like an avalanche. In that sense, she reminds me of Galadriel from that scene in the Fellowship of the Ring. All will love me and despair. But she has also been a guiding hand to heroes though perhaps for her own reasons. The voice that you hear at the beginning of the game Morrowind is that of Azura's. They have taken you from the Imperial City's prison, first by carriage and now by boat. To the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. It is her prophecy the prophecy of the Navarine that your character will fulfill upon completion of Morrowind's main quest. Both the Dumna of Morrowind and Khajiit of Elsewhere honor Azura, though in different ways, the Dumna of Morrowind believe that Azura is their god ancestor. It is they who created the towering shrine to her in Skyrim. This was because a few years after the events of Oblivion, Azura warned her faithful in Bardenfall of an impending catastrophe so they left and hence survived the eruption of Red Mountain. These faithful then went on to build Skyrim Shrine to Azura. In Khajiiti creation myths, the Khajiit believe that Azura crafted them in her own shape. She is said to know the name of every Khajiit, and I quite like that idea. It sounds like something a loving shepherd would do for their flock. Though perhaps all it means is she is constantly watching and judging the furry cat folk of Tamriel. Meow. Regardless, the Khajiit believe that they will travel to her domain of Moonshadow when they die. If you find this video interesting, could I ask you to give it a like? That would be great. Thanks. Azura's Shrine is in an isolated region of the Gerald Mountains, north of Lake Arias. The shrine is not obvious from a distance as it is in Skyrim, so it is unlikely to just be stumbled upon. There is a way to obtain a map marker to Azura's shrine. It is a bit convoluted and not obvious, but I'll describe it here. Note this method will also help find eight of the other Daedric shrine locations, which I'll describe in later videos. Of course, you don't need the map marker. You could just bet a game and walk to this point on the map. But following the quest path can be fun. You first have to read the book Modern Heretics, a study of Daedra worship in the Empire. This book is found in Cloud Ruler Temple, the headquarters of the Blades in Cyrodiil. So you need to be far enough along in the main quest to have access to Cloud Ruler Temple. The location of the book moves. Uh, once Martin begins his studies, he has it with him in the main hall. But before that, it is on one of the bookshelves in the barracks. The book is also to be found in the Mystic Archives of the Imperial City's Arcane University, which you can access if you're a full member of Mages Guild in good standing. Reading the book will mean a Daedra Shrine topic becomes available when speaking to certain NPCs throughout the game world. Choosing this topic in conversation will add certain shrine locations to your map. It's interesting, I found that just reading Modern Heretics placed the location of Azura's Shrine on my map. And that makes sense as the text of the book mentions Azura's shrine by name, the author having visited it himself. Although you now have the shrine's location on your map, there are three people in Shaden Hall you can speak to about Azura's shrine. Trayvon, the Red Guard in the Mages Guild. Deirdre cults aren't necessarily evil, of course. In nearby Morrowind, for example, they worship Deirdre in the temple. The Azura shrine north of town, up Lake Arius Way, for instance. I know a dark elf there. Nothing evil about him. I'm Yuleni Lervu, castle mage. 
Perhaps you've been warned off me as a scandalous, blasphemous scoffer and cynic. The characterization is completely accurate. I despise the gods and those who bow before them. You worship the nine divines, perhaps. Have they ever helped or harmed you? Of course not. Now worship a Deidre lord and you get effects. Bad ones, of course, but clear and measurable effects. The Azura Coven in the Geralds north of Chadenhall. Nice folks. Nothing like the blood-drinking Deidre worshippers everyone raves about. A waste of time, of course, worshipping gods in the first place. But at least they're not raving lunatics. Horba Grausgash. We've got everything the adventurer needs. I'm an old adventurer myself, and I know what's wanted. A shrine to Azura lies in the Gerald Mountains far to the north towards the Skyrim border. And I think there's a shrine to Boethia high in the Vallis Mountains, southeast of Chadenhall. It does take a while to walk to the shrine. You leave Chadenhall from the east gate. And follow this path north. Horseback is not recommended. You will be constantly dismounting as there are bandits and wolves on the road. Fight your way through. What? I see no reason to talk to you. I'm done talking to you. Follow the road around and here, tucked into its own small corner of Cyrodiil, is the Shrine of Azura. Worshippers of Azura are called Azurites, and there are three of them here. They are suspicious of you. This place is sacred. Please respect our privacy. I'm trying to concentrate, if you don't mind. Speak to the Dumna, Mel's Mayong. You have entered a holy place. What is your business here? These are dark times, and people's minds are poisoned by rumors and superstition. Unless you can persuade me of your good intentions, I cannot speak further on this matter. You'll need to raise his disposition up to at least 50 before Maybe he'll tell quick. you how to gain an audience with the Queen of Dusk and Dawn. This is the Shrine of Azura, Queen of the Dawn and the Dusk. What is your business here, Traveller? If you wish to speak to the Lady, visit her shrine at dawn or dusk. Leave her an offering of glow dust, and perhaps she will deign to speak with you. I'll be here. As you heard, you need to get your hands on some glow dust, which you can obtain from Willow the Wisps. However, I had an issue in that this monster only appears in the game world once you reach level 9 or 10, and my character was level 3. However, I got a tip that there was some glow dust in the Broomer's Mage Guild, which you may steal with some difficulty, or if you're an up and coming member of the guild, you can just take it. Just be aware that this Mage's Guild sample can't be obtained after the start of the quest plot revealed, as you can see here. Thankfully, if you're prepared to travel to the capital, there are merchants in the market district who have a small amount of glow dust to sell. Ogier at the main ingredient and Claudette at the Gilded Craft both sell it. You only need one piece. I found Ogier's prices to be a little better. To speak to Azura, you must bring your offering of glow dust to the shrine and activate the shrine at either dawn or dusk, which means between 5 and 7 a.m. or 5 to 7 p.m. Only then will Azura speak to you. I have seen your name, Traveller, and heard it whispered in twilight. I ask a service which holds promise of fame and reward. Many years ago, Five followers slew the vampire Dratic and its kin 
but all were infected by the foul creature. Knowing their fate, they sealed themselves up in the vampire's lair. Their suffering weighs heavily on me. Travel to the gutted mine. The door will open to you. Bring the peace of death to my followers, and you shall earn my gratitude. So your task is straightforward. Cleanse the gutted mine of its five vampire inhabitants. What is your wish? You who have been blessed by Our Lady's voice. There our brethren destroyed the vampire Dratic, but all were infected by the abomination and were doomed to turn themselves. It was then that Azura, may she bless our days, sealed the cavern, protecting the world from the monstrosities within. It has been sealed ever since. The Great Lady has spoken. To you alone, the moon and star shall be your guide. The Gutted Mine is only a short walk from the shrine. It can't be entered until you have this quest. Within, there are two swinging mace traps to watch out for. But beware, defeating five vampires is no easy task. As full vampires, they are able to become invisible. They are immune to disease and paralysis, have resistances to normal weapons and some raised attributes and skills as well. But they have one notable weakness, fire. They have a 50% vulnerability to fire. So if you're lucky enough to have a weapon that inflicts fire damage, that will help. Fire-based spells will also do the trick. Magical weapons will bypass their resistance to normal weapons. However, as a level 3 melee-based character, I found that this fight was a hard slog. You may be lucky to encounter one of them at a time, but you're more than likely to have at least one encounter where two of them attack together. The last two vampires are in an area beyond this concealed door, opened by pulling this rope. The mine is close quarters. Your enemy may be blocked by scaffolding, or you may find yourself backed up against it during combat. Once the dirty deed is done, you can explore the old silver mine. There are a few coffins in the mine, including one boss coffin, accessed by pushing some loose planks. It is possible to mine for silver nuggets in gutted mine. No mining pick required. This feels like an early version of Skyrim's mining mechanic. There are eight silver veins in the mine, the most for any mine in the game apparently, each yielding from one to three silver nuggets. There is no smelting mechanic within Oblivion, so the only use for the silver nuggets is to sell them. But I thought that the mining of silver was a nice touch. All five vampires are just labeled afflicted brethren but they have names which you can learn by reading a note found on the corpse of the male orc. This worn faded note was written on a scrap of parchment and secured by a piece of rawhide to the vampire's neck. My name is Gola Gromosgol. My companion's names are Arnalda, Nile Elf Daughter, Levita Kessiana, and Uma Grakar. The vampire Dratic died by our hands, but the price was dear. Those into whose hands we have fallen, we thank you and pray your favour. We served Lady Azura. Bring these our last words to her shrine. We praise her with the full fountain of our devotion. Our destinies were written in the stars, that our souls and reason be slain, and our world lost forever. None can escape her fate, but let us be remembered at her shrine and in the hearts of her servants. It is only by fate that any life ends, and only by chance that it is mine, not yours. The gameplay footage I captured of this combat was a bit frantic. My uh, sword flailing and potion guzzling uh, took up a lot of time. So I've made this additional footage of each vampire so you can see who got there. Near the entrance, I first encountered Nali Elf Daughter, a Nord Bard. The next was Uma Graka, an Orc Crusader. And Avita Kessiana, an Imperial Monk. Through the concealed door was Arinalda, a high elf witch hunter. And Golar Gromazgol, the orc warrior, perhaps the toughest of them all. Apparently there is a chance that they will have magical weapons and armor, but I didn't find any on any of them, which may actually have been a blessing as that could have been used against me and made the fight tougher. Once the job is done, activate Azura's shrine. Thank you, mortal. 
their spirits are free. And henceforth, above my shrine, five bright candles shall burn forever in memory of their sacrifice. For your service, take this token, that your deeds might be entered in the Book of Fate. So what's your reward for risking your life? Azura Star. Azura Star is a daedric artifact. It acts as a grand soul gem, which you can use to enchant items or recharge magical weapons. A normal soul gem is destroyed during this process, but Azura's star is just emptied and remains in your infantry, ready to be filled the next time you cast Soul Trap on a non-humanoid monster. So, what's the chance you'll fight five vampires and not contract the dreaded horrific haemophilia? Hmm. As you can see, my fatigue was a bit low, and no rest, no potions or spells would recover it to full. That's when I realised that I was infected, and I knew that I had three days to treat it before the grips of vampirism began to take hold. Thankfully, treatment is quite simple. Visit the chapel and pray. Azura is known to insist on the love of her followers and to come down hard on those who cross her. But this quest was a mercy killing. Knowing his mind was going, Gola penned that note and secured it to his person. It was a testament of his love for the Lady Azura right up until his sanity faded, which he knew it would. Azura knew it too. She was pleased with their efforts, their worship, and had you end their suffering. I'm planning to do a video on every one of the 15 Daedric quests in Oblivion, so feel free to subscribe to make sure you can follow along. Here's a video that I did last month on Sheagor's Daedric quest in Oblivion. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers. Ramnexus out.